Hi everyone, Mark DeJesus here. In this session, I want to address the topic, how to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Just the very subject alone can, in many people's lives, lead them to great empowerment. But I also know many believers that struggle with what does it mean to love God? What does it mean to engage him with all of your heart? What does it mean with all of your soul, mind, and strength? What does it look like to have a powerful love relationship with God? Because in the scriptures, God does mention we are to love him, as we're going to see in the scriptures I'm going to bring out, to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and to love our neighbor as ourself. So I want to take a moment here and kind of break this down. How do we love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength? Well, let's look at these passages and then look at some of the words to consider before I get into the practical steps. The first thing is Deuteronomy 6.5 is where this is mentioned. This is the initial mentioning of God establishing his heart for love relationship. Keep in mind, this is under the old covenant of the law, but yet even within the parameters of the law, God is establishing the importance of love relationship. And he's setting the stage for an eternal understanding of how important it is to love God and connect to his love and to experience that love in our relationships. He says, you shall love the Lord your God. And in Deuteronomy, it covers three areas, your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And so in the Old Testament, you don't see the word mind brought out because Jesus, when he says it, he brings out the mind. He says, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God. And this is in Matthew 22, 37. You'll love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and he says, with all your mind. So there's two things worth mentioning here. What I like to do is say, let's look at all four of these words to let them encompass the power of love, to let love influence all those areas, but to also understand too, in the Old Testament writings, there was no word for mind. It was all heart. Also, the learning that went on when things were learned, there was it was done in a mentoring context. It was working with someone, walking with them to teach, to remind them. It was a learning, not just in a textbook kind of format, but learning through the experience, the ways of God. In the New Testament times, you live in the, you see the times of the influence of the Greeks, which elevated philosophy and the mind and reasoning and understanding and the accumulation of knowledge, which the accumulation of knowledge is great, but there's some, there's some things we're all running into. One is we all realize you can have head knowledge of something, but feel very disconnected to it and, and struggle with possess, possessing it, experiencing it in your life. And it's important to learn, too, that when it comes to love, love isn't something you can just learn in a classroom. Love is something you have to engage your full faculties to it. So although learning about it is great, we have to find our ways of application and learning. So I just find that interesting, whereas in the New Covenant times, the times of Jesus, there was a lot of elevation of mind thinking. And in some ways, it enhanced society and created opportunities for greater development. But in other ways, it distanced us from emotion. It distanced us from connection and really understanding that love is something that needs to be experienced. So just some food for thought as we're learning to process. So let's look at these four words, okay? These four words that talk, that reference, we're going to love God with all of these areas. The first area is your heart. And what I want to point to when it comes to loving God with all of our heart, this really deals with our core affections. The Bible says where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So I want God to have access to every place of my heart, to my core affections, and even my desires be formed by the love of God, be influenced by the love of God. And this is what I'm so passionate about, is encouraging people to get to the root system of their life. Getting to the heart of the matter is really what it's all about. Because when our love relationship with God influences our heart, then our motives get influenced. It's not just what we do, 
It's like, why do we do it? You know, we get more honest when we look at our anger problems. We get more honest about why do I get angry? What's the real thing that's going on in my life? You see, when we have a heart relationship, there's a, it's a whole different level. When you have a heart relationship with somebody, it moves past just being polite and the formalities. It moves into being known. It moves into being vulnerable. And so I tell people, you want to have a real relationship with God. It often takes the first step of, do I want a real relationship where I can allow him to be involved in every aspect of my life? And because of how we've been taught about God, we avoid that. For so many years in my life growing up, the concept of give your all to God, give your whole heart to him. First of all, I felt like it was like I never could do it enough. So I was always striving. And two, it was incredibly frightening because I didn't realize how much in his love he receives me to connect to him. I was so aware of all my sins, flaws, failures, mistakes, hangups, weaknesses, and all that. I became so distracted by it. The idea of loving God with all my heart was very, very challenging. So for many of you can relate to that. You're just very under this pressure. I got to love him with all my heart, right? But it's this endless striving. And what are you what are you looking at when it comes to actually approaching God? Who is he? Are you approaching him in that he's always angry at you, ready to cast you away, and nothing's ever good enough, you know, kind of mentality that you feed, then that's gonna influence this. And for many people, it distorts how they even approach loving God because it's performance based, right? So we have to understand who we're talking about. We talk about God and Jesus represented the heart of the father in each interaction so that people would understand this is the God we're talking about. And this is the God I'm saying, love him with all of your heart because this is a real relationship that you can have a real dynamic, authentic relationship. The second area gets into is the soul. And when you hear me talk about the soul, some of the things that I talk about are your belief systems, your thinking patterns, the perspectives you have on God, life, this world, your identity. How do you see yourself? How, do, how does your personality get formed? And how does it, how does your style of relating? When my soul, when I love God with all of my soul, I allow his love to infiltrate my belief systems, to be formed by love relationship with God. My thinking patterns to be formed out of love relationship with God, my perspectives, my identity, and my ways of relating. You see, every aspect of our life that's not first formed by the love of God can go into all kinds of distorted, dysfunctional, unhelpful, disempowering areas where faith, hope, and love don't increase but feel stagnant in our life. So I want to take my belief systems and form them. People say, how do I, how do I go stronger and like, let my soul be uh, thinking on and meditating on things more powerfully? Well, let it be influenced by love, by the love of the Father for you, his undying, never-ending, compassionate love that he has for you. And Jesus brings in the word, he brings in the, in the word where the Old Testament brings in strength, he brings in the word mind. Now, before I get to mind, let me just address strength, because that's from the book of Deuteronomy, where in there he talks about uh, that word strength, it's um, great might to a great degree. So in the biblical context here, um, that word in the, in, the, in the Old Testament can speak of like exceeding, very. There's like an, an intensity to it, that we be known for our passion for God, that we get excited about it, we guard our affection for him. There's a force of passion that I just love him. There's a picture of like that I, that I get of a man who just loves the woman that he's with. And he says, I love this woman. You know, that kind of um, where there's an exuberance and there's just an overflow of strength and energy. A love relationship with God ought to add energy to our life. I just think in that simplest form, imagine being with a person that you truly love and you experience love being around them. Do you walk away drained or do you walk away with energy added to you? Refreshment. And when I look around and observe 
the modern Christian life, it's very drained, very burnt out, very, there's like a loss of energy. There's, there's more heaviness than there is joyful, rejoicing experience to that degree. We have, we have, we have a ways to, to go of resetting our understanding of what it means to let his love infiltrate. Love empowers your life. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13 that love believes all things. When I connect to the love of God, it enhances my belief system. It enhances my perspective. I learn to believe again, to believe stronger. Now, many say, eh, I don't have any strength. I don't have it. I just don't have it. And, and typically what we do as preachers and teachers is we just kind of condemn people for that state. And we kind of, what's wrong with you to, to, to so many of our brothers and sisters? And what, love, what we don't understand is when you don't have strength, the love of God arrives to meet you. Because when you're at your weakest, he's still at his strongest. And his, this is where we learn his grace, where he meets us, where we're stumbling, fumbling, struggling. Because mo- many believers read the passages of love the Lord your God, and they feel it disqualifies them because they view it from a performance place, and that performance has burned them out. They're like trying to love. I remember, I remember literally kind of saying, okay, I'm really loving you, God. I was like, what is that like <laughs> to, to actually engage it? So I always felt never enough, never enough, never enough. I didn't know how to relax in love relationship, have that great passion, but not passion in performance and trying to make it happen. But the passionate just learning to rest and enjoy and feed off of because his love adds fuel and adds, adds energy to my life when I'm connecting to it in its authentic way. So Jesus adds the mind. We can kind of connect some of that to soul, right? Because the mind, you know, the Greek culture brought out the elevation of the mind, but the mind without love has a lot of emptiness. Sometimes the smartest people can feel incredibly empty. Sometimes those who have great knowledge and great perspective and understanding. And so what I want to do is I want my mind, my actual thought patterns, how I think, my emotions. that that Because I talk about when our thoughts, our thoughts have emotions connected to them. That's why we pay attention to them. I want every thought that passes through, good, bad, whatever, I want every thought to come into, into, come under the influence first of the dominion of the love of God. Because then that sets the stage. Because without his love, man, I'm going to try to do all this stuff to fix my thoughts, make sure I'm doing good, I'm going to be under pressure, don't make sure I think these thoughts, make sure I don't. And all it does is make us land into failure more and more. Because I need to learn how to lean on His love to help me to form the thoughts. Thoughts that are based on God's ways are meant to be formed out of relationship with him. We have been duped in so many ways by forms of religiosity that get us bound in certain patterns of trying to fix all these things without first connecting to the fact I am loved right now. Before I even address any of my thoughts that I'm battling with, I must first establish love. What it means to be connected to the love of God. Now, there's a passage of scripture that I found very helpful for me in the early stages of my renovation, which I call. And and when you do renovations, you, you, you go past just patching holes in the wall. You go down to the foundation. I was reminded of Revelation 3.20, which, by the way, is often used as an evangelistic tool to win others to Christ. But this is actually written to the church. Jesus is is saying, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, he doesn't say I'm going to come in and wring your neck and I'm going to point out every flaw in your life. He says, I want to come in and dine with you. And you with me. He's like, "This, this is not just a one way of me just 
interacting with you. You ever sit down and have a meal with somebody that you're doing all the talking or you're doing all the interacting? Jesus is saying, it's not about that. It's, I want to dine with you and you with me. I want you to learn how to experience who I am. I want you to learn how to express that to me. I want that connection. So when I began what I call the renovation of my life, when I'm struggling with anxiety, obsessive thinking, depression, panic attacks, all this stuff, where I'm like realizing I'm just a mess in my thoughts. Then I began to look around and, and people I was talking to, they were saying, yeah, I struggle with that too. I struggle with that too. And I'm looking around at the body of Christ and going, we're all struggling with this stuff, right? Typically what we do with God is we say, God, I need you to work on this with me. And God will often say, no, I'm actually working over here. And we think, oh my goodness, this is so unrelated. And I just, I kept sensing God pointing me back to what it meant to just connect with him in a Revelation 3.20, to just be with him, to not rush through it, to just sit with him, to be able to just connect. And yes, avenues of worship and praise, those kind of things, certainly, but even just stillness, quiet, learning to quiet myself and quiet all the noise and just be. We, in our busy lives and all our constant stressors and and voices that scream in our, in our thoughts. The greatest war is over just being able to connect to Revelation 3.20, to sit and have a meal. It's time for us to start doing that, to realize we're malnourished and we need the sustenance, the nutrition of connection. In any great relationship, when that simple intimacy isn't there, the great relationship says, it's time to recognize this. It's time to get back to the fundamentals. Because for so many of us, the Christian life gets complicated in our busyness, our church service, our, our activities, and all these things that we do in our modern living. But at the end of the day, do you feel refreshed by it? Do our, do our spiritual ministry, even your personal devotional activities, do they refresh you? I didn't say, do you feel like, oh, I did that today, so I feel good because I did that. Does it actually refresh you? If not, you found a good resource today because I'm speaking into this for your life and your journey. And so what I want to do is I want to empower, but it has to be important to you. We have to say, you know what? This is a value. I, I want what Christ wants. I want this. I want this dining. I want a real relationship. I don't want this phony thing where I'm just constantly unfulfilled, constantly feeling disconnected. I want a real love relationship. Well, there's many people around you that are being sucked into a hypnosis that pulls them into chronic busyness and striving and all this stuff that's leaving them feel very empty and very disconnected. So you're going to have to be aware and that value system, there's some things that you'll need to understand to help move you into a new direction. And I want to encourage you in these. And these are not a list of like to-do lists or things of like, you know, use these 10 things. These are important thoughts to help navigate this for you. And the first thing is this. Very, very important. Loving God is a response to his love for you. Loving God is is a response to his love for you. To the average Christian, when we talk about loving God, we feel this sense of like, okay, I got to dig real deep. Here we go. Okay, God, I'm going to love you. We, we apply a sense of what energy we can muster up. Why? Because there's a plague of people living under performance-driven Christianity. It's a hidden work of law-influenced thinking, living, behaving, where we relate to God out of this, like, striving. We have this sense of, like, it's got to be enough. I've, I've got to do it just right. I've got to make sure that I stick with the check boxes and get the rules right. And what happens is we're left feeling empty. In that emptiness... We look at ourselves with shame and we say, I just can't do it. I'm not doing it good enough. And so instead of getting to more the heart of the matter, which is like how I'm approaching God, 
needs relearning and equipping. We go back and say, I just need to try more and do more. You know what? Maybe I just need to pray longer. Maybe I need to do this. Maybe I need to serve much longer. I'm not dedicated as enough. I'm not, I got to be more joyous. I'm going to, I'm going to put some force to this and I'm going to be joyful. Come on, be joyful. Right? And that performance-driven living leaves us exhausted. That's why I wrote a book called Exposing the Rejection Mindset, because in that, I document the rejection route, and it, it comes about in all our lives in places where we don't experience the unconditional, empowering love of the Father. So therefore, we don't know who we are. We live in spiritual slavery. Our identity becomes based on what we do. And I am seeing scores of believers with even massive debilitating depression, many times just can't even get out of bed simply because they've been taught a performance-based interaction with God. The weight is on them. They feel this constant striving, constant doing to try to love God. And they have not been taught, no, we love him as a response. Loving him as a response to receiving his love. Look at look at what 1 John says in 1 John 4.10. I appreciate his message here. He says, in this is love. Not that we loved God. Like, wait a second. Is this contradicting? Is this, is this, is this counteracting? Wait, it's just, is this in conflict with what we just read in Matthew? What Jesus said? No, it's bringing fuller context to it. See, this is, this is what's important about the word of God. The word of God works in harmony so where you see one verse going one direction, it's meant to provide harmony because the, in musical score, the note by itself needs the other note to create a harmony. Oftentimes in music, you'll have three notes that make like a chord and them together create a harmony together. That's beautiful. And in many ways, the scriptures do that. They create a harmony. So what John is doing, he's bringing a fuller understanding that love is not like you trying to love God. You don't have it in you. You need an encounter with God's love. It's in a response, and that opens up his grace. Now, of course, it doesn't mean you have zero capacity to love or experience love. People who don't believe in God can love. But this depth of love relationship with God is built on his love for you. He says, in this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son. This eternal, this eternally significant moment in time where he sent his son to be the propitiation, to be the atonement, to be the covering for our sins, so that this love blanket fills the atmosphere. So I can now come boldly before the throne of grace because I'm responding to what he's done. And many of you have been taught to do, 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 not in response. You haven't been taught the response of just the beauty. We're focused on how good we're, oh, I did my devotions today, I'm doing, doing good. It's worthless. <laughs> Now, I don't mean, I don't mean what you're, you know, I don't want to call your life worthless. You know what I'm saying? Like this perspective of trying and trying and instead just posturing yourself to receive. When I changed my posture, just learned to receive, it dynamically changed my capacity to love him. So in verse 19, again, John says, and I've, I quote this all the time. We love him because he first loved us. Otherwise, loving God is going to be an attempt to earn his love, to earn his approval and validation, not a response to his love that's already available to you. And what I discovered is learning to receive began to actively teach me about his grace. Because God's grace is his divine power working in and through our hearts and our lives. It's an energy from heaven that comes in alignment with just connecting to more and more of how he sees you and how he sees others. And it empowers you. That love sets the, the footprint of how hope and faith get ignited. And many of you need encouragement to stop this, I just love him. Instead, just right where you are, let all of you 
be loved by all of him. Let your life just be impacted. See yourself through that love. What does it look like to see yourself the way that God sees you? You didn't start. So loving God with all your soul, mind, and strength doesn't start with you. Interesting. Because many of you think it starts with you. Mm -mm. Started with him who started before you were even born, before you even had a thought. He saw you. And he has love towards you. So that's the discovery of not this endless striving and all this things that we, these hula hoops that we jump through, right? And seeing myself through that love and letting it be a response, that began to change my life and will forever be something that will continue to be growing and expanding. Loving God is, is not experienced in striving. This is really important. No relationship grows by forcing it in, in this like, I got to do it. Many of you are in that performance mode. Let go of the striving. Love is not nurtured while under stress. Love is not developed by just trying harder. Love is developed by learning to pause and take in the beauty of who he is and his love towards you and letting that be a part of how you see everything. So now my heart, soul, mind, and strength come under the influence of the majestic, powerful love of God. Now we have to pause our striving doesn't help for two reasons. One, it puts it all on our effort to make this happen. And two, the striving puts us under a busy buzz, doing a lot of stuff, but never really connecting. And modern Christian activity is very busy, but it's unfulfilling. And it leaves us with a burnout kind of posture and then we blame ourselves and it's a it's a hamster wheel that we stay in and so for many of you there's a posture of striving that needs to be let go of now i'm going to tell you this this is going to be important as you let go here's something that i've learned in my life is is we don't really make heart changes until we really come to the end of ourselves Come to the end of ourselves, meaning like, okay, something needs to fundamentally change in my life. Otherwise, we just keep patching holes and we'll just keep trying to build on, on this structure that is just leave, keeping us in these same traps. I had to come to a place where I came to a humble surrender. But it was a humble surrender and a posture of learning. It wasn't like... You know, sometimes the words, even the word surrender spins out many believers because they're taught of surrender, like in the context of an angry God, performance driven God, and nothing's ever enough. So you're not, it, there, there isn't this, you're giving out not of an experience of love, you're giving out almost to try to earn love. And, and Paul talked about, like, you can give your body to be burned. There's people who give their body to be burned, but they're like still trying to do it in this exclamation of maybe this will give attention to heaven that I really love you you know try to elevate what we can do and so I want to encourage the surrender is more just cease from striving <sighs> take a deep breath and just yield your faculties God I humble myself I don't know what love is I don't know how to love you I don't know how to connect to your love as a father. And many, in many ways, those were some of the wordings I said to God myself. I said this sentence, God, I don't know you as father. I don't know how to connect to your love as father, but I want to learn. So surrender, there's a humility that I need to know. And I posture my heart to learn so that I can extract from my journey 
through the word, through interactions, through even coincidental moments where God can use everything to speak into my life. This is where I am, honestly, God. I don't know how to, many of you saying, I don't know how to connect to your love. But I want to. And will you show me? And that's the beauty because God meets you where you're at and his grace arrives to empower you. And you yield to that grace step by step. Yeah, but Mark, my life is so messed up and I'm at a, I'm at desperation. We got to get you out of desperation because love is not desperation. I understand that emotion. But if we live from desperation to desperation, we won't hear his love because love isn't just a 911 response. And sometimes that desperation is, if I'm desperate enough, you know, and we used to sing this, I'm desperate for you, you know. We meant well, but it's like if I sing this loud enough, heaven's going to come here. Relax. Just surrender your faculties to who he is. Let all of you be impacted by all of him. Well, that's scary, Mark. Well, what kind of God have you been introduced to? Now, God, he wants an all-in relationship. Don't get me wrong. You know, he want, but doesn't, doesn't anyone who have, wants a deep relationship with somebody, don't you want an all-in? When you get married, and a marriage is a picture of our relationship with Christ, do you want, do you want a marriage that's like, well, we'll see, or do you want, I'm all in, right? So what's in the natural is true in the, true in the spiritual, so yes, he wants an all-in, all-surrender relationship. But what that means gets distorted because of how we see him. You know, I, I lived so many years of my life, like if I live in full surrender, that means everything I like, I have to give up because, because I got to live in surrender. It got real distorted in my life. And, and I felt shameful even expressing this because I felt like nobody else had this battle. You know, and then I began to share it. And people were like, yeah, me too. It's a, it's a God distortion. The thinking like if I feel a passion to go down this pathway, no, God doesn't want that. He wants me to go, you know, leave everything and go to another country. You know, because because I had this assumption, it was always always kind of the most difficult scenario was always what God wanted. (laughs) And I'm not saying that your journey won't lead you in difficult places. I'm just saying our distortions of who we're approaching. Like, wait a second, I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with a father here. And I have to learn what it means to relate to a good father as a son, not a slave. And so I hope this is encouraging to your life. So a loving relationship with God flourishes by letting him be a part of everything in your life. Stop seeing God as like you connect with him during devotion. Instead, connect with a God that's always with you all the time. He never leaves. He's always by your side. Connect to that. And that's abiding in him. We want to learn about abiding in him. It's just increasing our awareness of who he is at every moment. Now, it doesn't mean you walk around going, oh, Jesus is here. Jesus is with me. You know, God is with me. He, he just spoke to me. Oh, he's there. It, 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 it's not, it, I'm not talking about that kind of obsession. I'm talking about just in your everyday life, in just the little matters, you're just aware of, that he's with you. That's very empowering to me. It adds energy to me to know he's got my back. He's with me. And I've got an obstacle in my life. He's not trying to kill me. He's not trying to just, you know, do all these things against me. He's here with me to equip me, empower me. I'm going to learn through this how to experience his nature. You see what I'm saying? I'm allowing love, love relationship to influence everything. And relationship is like we're connected. We're connecting. And yes, I have those moments, those pit stops, right? And you're like, well, where do I start actually applying this? Well, start with where you are right now. God meets you where you're at. So give him what you have. And so many times believers are like, I should be praying an hour. Well, you can't even seem to pray 30 seconds. And then you condemn yourself that you can't pray 30 seconds. Well, give him 30 seconds and experience an amazing 30 seconds. Because for, for many of you, you need your whole devotional life needs a, or, or, or your quiet time, whatever you call it, needs an overhaul. 
Meaning that God's like, yeah, let's stop doing this because I'm getting bored too. <laughs> right? Start where you are. And for me, I tell, this is an old story and I, I, it's worth repeating. Busy, busy, go, go, go life. But I realized this love of the father, sonship, learning to receive his love. This began to open up in my heart and my life. But yet I still had this, you know, tons of layers of busy, striving, performance, perfectionism. So I just gave him, I gave him what I had. Before I went out the door, I felt this prompting. Just before you go out, just sit for a moment and just reflect on my love that I have for you. And look at your day at all the things on your calendar and let each of the things on your calendar be influenced, your perspective on them, be influenced. I love you. I've got you. I'm here with you. And you don't have to earn my love in all these meetings and all these places. So I began to realize I can get filled by him so that I don't go out there to try to get my core need of love met by all these people's circumstances, whether it's through performance, the applause, the getting people to like me, people pleasing, tying into codependent patterns, tying in to these enmeshment patterns, tying in to trying to make everyone happy. All that stuff comes out of we're disconnected to the Father's love for us. And so for me, in the beginning, all I had was a minute, meaning that's all I was able to handle and then I just increased it and I increased it and then it grew and blossomed and there's different ways now and, and, I, and I find more enjoyment. It's about enjoying him. Love relationship is about enjoyment. Does the church's emphasis and teaching on love relationship have the fruit of the spirit, have enjoyment as a manifestation? Because for many, it's just obligation and duty. Jesus did not die on the cross so that we would manifest the same duty and law. <laughs> because this duty is duty. <laughs> he didn't die so that we would then keep striving and keep looking at how good are we doing. But we've been taught that. You've been conditioned in that. And our, and our modern cultures keep that going with our constant busyness, performance-based environments. So let him meet you where you're at. Maybe you're a pastor or church leader and you're always busy and everything's going. Just meet him where you're at. There, there was a song I played in one of my videos, Passed by New Song. It's an old song. It's called Before the Day. And it just simply goes, before the day slips away, I want to stop and say I love you. Now, I'll, let me rephrase that for you. Before the day slips away, I want to stop and thank you for the love you have for me. I'm, just, I'm not saying don't say I love you. I'm just saying reset the starting place. Let your faculties be impacted by how much he loves you right now. Stop trying to get it together and then you'll feel better. Because then your love relationship with God will always be conditional. So if you get it together and get your act together, whatever that means, then now from here on out, it's based on you getting it right. And I want to release you of that. Let God meet you where you are right now. And then that'll impact how you relate to others. Because loving God grows as you practice giving out that love that you're experiencing, that you're learning to receive and experience. You know, we live in a very um, fabricated where we feel like imposters in what we're sharing with people. Why? Because we're forced to live in this role that's not authentic to just, hey, I'm in my journey, you're in yours. And I want to just keep lowering that facade and lowering that facade. No, no, no. I'm on a journey and I'm simply giving out to you what I am learning. I'm not giving out to you where I've arrived. Let's, I'm going to level that too. I'm giving out of what I'm learning myself and growing in. And this gets rid of hypocritical ministry. And this gets rid of these phony baloney standards by which we live by. It's inauthentic. And it's, it's, it's not helping the mental and emotional health of people. Whether you're up on the platform or whether you're in a position or not, we're all on a journey. And we all have areas that God is working out and healing and growing. 
And so I'm going to share with you what I've learned in my own life. And so I pray that somewhere in today, you found some good takeaways. If this resource is a blessing to your life, please consider going to markdehasius.com. Click on the donate button. You can give a one-time donation or become a regular partner. There is also a level one and level two partnership available at this time that gives you access to some other resources too that will just add to your equipping if you want to choose those, but you don't have to choose those specific ones. You can you can donate an, any amount of your choosing and the various ways you can do that are on the donate page. If you want to connect more to the love of the Father, then this book is is my gift to you, Experiencing God's Love as Your Father. You can get it as a free download, but you can also get it as a hard cover. I, 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 it's, a, it's a great gift that you can give out to somebody, and you, man, you want to learn how to connect to who he is as Father. And I just pray that the resources and materials that we're putting together are a blessing to your life, to those you love. And I just pray you learn to receive his love for you. Let it impact your heart, soul, mind, and strength so that you respond out of that and give your full self to him. And I'm really grateful. May grace and love increase and may healing and freedom just be added to your life. Many blessings to y'all. See you next time. Lord willing and the creek don't rise.